karate instructor who ran his own school for several years is facing charges of sexually assaulting a minor. World's largest electronics show is underway right here in Las Vegas. We're live at CES with a look at the newest gadgets. And Nevada leaders are trying to reach out to the growing number of meth addicts in our state. This is Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6 in high definition. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. A former karate instructor is facing charges for sexual assault and lewdness with a minor. Man's name is Wayne Lackno. He's charged with seven counts of lewdness with a minor under the age of 14 and two counts of sexual assault with a victim under 14. Police say he owned and operated the Lackno Kempo Karate School for several years. More recently, Lackno rented space from the owner of Vegas City Arts Dance Studio near Jones and Spring Mountain and held karate classes there two evenings a week. Investigators say back in September, an employee at the victim's school reported that the girl was being sexually abused by her mother's boyfriend. A lot of guys like that put themselves in position, like I said, put themselves in position so that they can have access to children, be it um, guys that work at um, some kind of um, youth group, guys that are you know, involved in Boy Scouts, people who are involved in, involved in youth sports. A lot of people put themselves in positions where they can have access to children. At this point, police believe she was the only victim, but they ask that anyone whose children took Lacno's classes report any suspicions of abuse by calling 828-3421. A Clark County firefighter has been arrested for soliciting a prostitute. Fernando Zarilla was arrested last night during a Metro sting operation when he allegedly solicited an undercover officer. This isn't the first time Zarilla has been in trouble with the law. He was arrested on the same charges in 1983 and 93. Police say Zarilla was also caught with an underage prostitute last June. He's been with the Clark County Fire Department since 1987. No word yet on his current status with the fire department. We want to show you some pictures out of California right now. These are live pictures, live helicopter pictures of a fire that is burning out of control in Malibu on the California coast. The flames are being fanned by Santa Ana winds. No word yet on how the fire started. It's burning at the intersection of Malibu Canyon Road and the Pacific Coast Highway right on the beach. In fact, the helicopter is over the water taking these pictures. The fire started about an hour ago and there's no word on when they might might get it under control. The world's newest electronic gadgets are on display right here in Las Vegas. The Consumer Electronics Show kicked off this morning at the Convention Center. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Manuel Gallegas is at the Convention Center. Manuel. Well, hello, Paul. You know, it was packed again here today, as it always is at the Consumer Electronics Show. And uh, it seems to me the trend this year is to take the products that we take for granted and make them better. A larger TV, for example, or a smaller MP3 that has a speaker built in, or a cell phone that has a television built in. Things to make our lives easier. It's an overwhelming display. Manufacturers from all over the world showing off their latest technological achievements. Thousands of gadgets and products from a small computer to the world's largest TVs. It's about $1,500 per household we'll spend on consumer electronics this year. The average American household has 26 electronic devices, many more if you have kids, and they're constantly evolving. Designers are cashing in on countless iPod accessories, from alarm clocks to lamps to headsets that mimic a big screen before your eyes. The trend in technology is to make things more easy and fun for the consumer. But even as we get used to using these new technological advances, we're inundated with other choices. There are picture frames for your digital photos and a hydraulic sports seat that blasts you through the slopes without leaving your living room. And as the titans still clash over Blu-ray video versus HD, one new device plays both formats. But Microsoft Chief Bill Gates says it doesn't matter because eventually we'll just watch TV online. TV is ripe for change. Uh, the fact that you never really did get all the choice that you want, you never did get it at the time that you would want. It's all about what we want, but just sit tight because the next greatest product is around the corner.
And there certainly are a lot of them here. Take a look. This is a GPS device that pops out. You can take it with you. That's something new. This is a DV cam from Panasonic, handheld, a high quality little device. Everybody's going to be shooting in HD, not DV, <laughs> HD. I get this wrong every time I tell you. This is a portable computer, rugged. You can drop it if you have to. It'll survive the fall. Paula, a lot of things going on here at the Consumer Electronics Show. A lot of things to look forward to down the road. Looks great. Thanks, Manuel. That convention just wrapped up for the day at 6 o'clock. Eyewitness News traffic reporter Annie Blanco is in Sky Witness 8 with a look at the traffic around there. Annie. Hi, Paula. That's right. The Consumer Electronics Show in town is here in Las Vegas. And if you live here and drive here, what does that mean for you? Well, for the most part, take a look down below. That means avoid this area just east of the Las Vegas Boulevard. What you're looking at is the intersection of Paradise and Desert Inn. Now, you want to avoid that probably altogether. Now, if uh, this is happening every day until Friday, CES wraps up around 6 o'clock, so keep that in mind. Now, this affects your daily commute across the valley instead of taking Paradise, you might want to take a Maryland or Valley View. And if wrapping up this is your bedtime, well, then you might want to remember to wake up early and give yourself time to get there and avoid those traffic headaches. Reporting from Sky Witness 8, I'm Annie Blanco. Now back to you. Annie, thank you very much. Federal judge decided this morning he will allow two new parties to fight for access to evidence in the case against polygamous leader Warren Jeffs. The FBI has been holding the items that were seized when Jeffs was arrested in southern Nevada last August. But now, lawyers for two groups want access to items in an effort to find assets they believe the fundamentalist LDS Church is hiding. Jeffs is currently in jail in Utah, facing charges of rape as an accomplice. Parents and teens in one part of Nevada are about to get a lesson on the negative effects of methamphetamine. It's a drug that's becoming more popular, especially among teens. Now, community leaders have had enough and are stepping in. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Melissa Duran shows us how. It's a devastating drug that can have long-lasting effects, emotional, mental, and physical. But here in Nevada, methamphetamine is quickly becoming the drug of choice. Dr. Mel Pohl sees it in a third of his patients here at the Las Vegas Recovery Center. This is a drug that makes you feel really, really good and multiply that by 10. I mean, we're talking about a drug that gives us a sense of euphoria and power and, and well-being. But once the high is gone, it leaves you on a fast track to the bottom. When the meth wears off, those chemicals tend to be depleted, so people are fatigued, people are depressed, people are uh, irritable. And Nevada teens keep trying it out. It's one reason why community leaders in Reno have decided to intervene. All local television stations in that city will run a 30-minute documentary on Tuesday night called Crystal Darkness, showing the negative effects of meth use. Dr. Pohl says it's an idea he'd like to see in Las Vegas. Any education regarding drug addiction in general and methamphetamine specifically could only benefit our community. He says it's a drug that takes time to overcome, and educating teens may stop an addiction early on before it ruins another their life. The pipe, you Melissa Dudon, Channel 8 Eyewitness oh. News. The organizers behind the documentary say they are already working with Las Vegas community leaders to have the video shown here. Well, McCarran Airport is the nation's fifth busiest airport, and some say unless more air traffic controllers are hired, public safety is at risk. Today's Democratic U.S. Representative Shelley Berkeley joined with members of the National Air Traffic Controllers Association to call on the FAA to train and hire more traffic controllers at McCarran. The group says 34 people are doing the job of 56 air traffic controllers, which leads to job fatigue. And with impending retirements, the controllers say the problem is only going to get worse. It's clear that the margin of safety is being diminished. Ten-hour days are not uncommon. Six Six-day work weeks are not uncommon. An FAA spokesman tells Eyewitness News the agency has a plan in place to maintain air traffic control staffing levels, including gaining eight new controllers in the Las Vegas area this year. It's been five years since the administration implemented the No Child Left Behind Act, but many educators still think it's, don't think it's measuring all students fairly. A local teacher explains why. We'll also show you the pictures of the wild horse roundup that's going on right here in southern Nevada. I'm Ted Florendo. It warmed up nice today and the winds relaxed too. Outside now, a nice clear night tonight. Something big's headed our way. We'll tell you all about it coming up. Today is the fifth anniversary of the No Child Left Behind Act. 
President Bush signed it into law, touting it as a way to improve students' skills and measure a school's success. But five years later, some say it still doesn't measure all students equally. Channel 8 Eyewitness News anchor Colleen May has the story. Yeah, let's do that side. Flossie Robinson has been teaching fourth grade in Gwendolyn Woolley Elementary for 17 okay? years. Right. I love to see them learn. Robinson says the biggest challenge of the No Child Left Behind Act is all the testing. It takes away from our instructional time, um, you know, with all the tests coming up on one another so quickly, you know, by the time we introduce things to the students, it's time to stop and test. Well, Robinson says schools should be held accountable, critics argue that the act puts some kids at a disadvantage, especially those who don't speak English and can't do as well on the testing. And students in low-income areas, they face their own set of challenges and may not come to school with the skills they need to do well. But Robinson says it's those students who keep her going year after year. It means the world when um, your kids go off and, you know, after they leave you and they've, they've moved on to the next step and the next level and they come back to see you and they let you know, oh, I just graduated from college and, and thank you. I mean, that's the best feeling in the world. Robinson says her mom inspired her to get into education and to help those who really need it. My mother worked 30 years for Child Haven. So I enjoyed going to work with her, with those children, and doing things with them. While No Child Left Behind may not be the answer to surefire success, Robinson says it is a step in the right direction, and she keeps her focus on the big picture as a way to measure her kids. You know, wh whatever the numbers end up being, they end up being, but the bottom line is I just want them all to to achieve and do well. Colleen May, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Critics also argue that each state sets its own pass or fail measures, so students are not judged equally across the country. Congress will decide this year whether to reauthorize that law. Well, coming up, we're going to take another look at that wildfire that's burning out of control in Malibu and the winds that are hindering firefighters' efforts. And we should all try to enjoy the nice weather while we can. Ted says it won't stick around too long. Details coming up in Neighborhood Weather. The federal government is rounding up wild horses between Cold Creek and the Indian Springs Correctional Facility, 22 miles north of the Las Vegas city limits. And Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Edward Lawrence explains the roundup caused a passionate debate on both sides. Cowboys, the Bureau of Land Management hired, used a helicopter to cover a huge area looking for wild horses. Moving just feet off the ground, it guided large herds back to a corral. BLM will round up all of the horses and burros, then re-release some of them back into the wild. BLM officers say that there just isn't enough food to go around. The herd has grown too big to be supported by this habitat. If we were never uh, able to gather the horses or remove excess animals, there would be so many that they would actually starve to death. BLM spokeswoman Kristen Cannon says the government has studies which back up her claim. Horse owner and Coal Creek resident Trey Casey Episcope basically says that's hogwash, and the wild horses look healthier than some in boarding stables. Half of them, even the stallions up here, I'm thinking I have to look, double take a look because I think they're pregnant half the time. Now Episcope watches and waits to see which horses she's used to seeing in her backyard return when this is over. Edward Lawrence, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The horses collected will be given birth control to limit the population growth. Most will be put up for adoption. A small portion will be re-released into the wild. For more information on the adoptions, go to our website, lasvegasnow.com. Talking about things the government's doing, tomorrow's your chance to voice your opinion on the 710 blast plan for the Nevada test site. The Divine Strike non-nuclear explosion has a lot of people concerned. Many are worried that the test will kick up radioactive dust from old nuclear tests. Tomorrow, the Pentagon will hold a meeting to answer questions and address those concerns. It'll be at the Cashman Center from 6.30 till 9 o'clock. McCarran International Airport is making it easier for visitors to enjoy their last day in town. For a small fee, guests can leave their bags at their hotel or at certain locations with a TSA agent to be sent to the airport and checked in. Travelers then pick up their luggage at the baggage claim at their final destination. The program is only available at two hotels and the Las Vegas Convention Center and only for Southwest Airline passengers, but airport officials are hoping to expand the program. We have so many people coming through Las Vegas, nearly 40 million people a year, and to have the opportunity to not have to worry about your bags, you simply leave them with us, pay the small fee, and off you go to enjoy your day or to go about your work. It's a great opportunity for people. 
Jones says since the program debuted in May, every bag has arrived at the right place at the right time. I want to go back to that fire now in Malibu. Hundreds of firefighters are either there or on the way to try to control that blaze that's burning there. It broke out just after 5 o'clock this afternoon near the intersection of Pacific Coast Highway and Malibu Canyon Road. Eight homes, we're told now, have been destroyed. At least five burned. And that's in an area of some of the most expensive homes in the United States, right there on the Pacific Coast. Flames are about a mile from Pepperdine University. That puts it in perspective for a lot of people. Authorities say at this point, though, there's no immediate threat to the university. City. Winds in that area were blowing 20 plus miles an hour when that fire broke out. Damn. That octagonal that. structure was intact yeah. when we came out here. We've Santa Ana winds? Santa Ana winds. The worst part of this whole thing is the temperatures also on those winds are at 80 degrees. Mm -hmm. So you got warm Santa Ana winds and you've got a lot of terrain there for it to climb too. Yeah. It should start to decrease. We'll tell you about that coming up and why these Santa Ana winds are occurring. But right now outside things are looking great here locally. We had some warmer conditions today. Clear skies overnight that will keep us a little chilly tonight, but not bad. Nowhere near the freezing mark, at least yet. <laughs> That's going to change, though, by the end of the week. Wait till you see our temperatures. Outside right now, you got calm winds. We've got lots of stars. I thought our first neighborhood we'd stop at, 215 in Durango. 62 degrees for you right now. Look at the winds there, though. Just a little breezy in those neighborhoods. West Gallon, 59 degrees right now. Nice mild night right now with nice calm winds outside. We have light winds to calm winds throughout most valley neighborhoods. But like I said yesterday, it would still be breezy around the Colorado River Valley. Check that out. Mr. Florendo was right. Search light down to Laughlin in the teens. You're still going to have some breezes again for this evening, and it should start to relax a little for tomorrow. How about those lows? We're near the freezing mark overnight. It was rather chilly throughout most valley neighborhoods. Lots of 30s there. 27 for Mesquite. Just shy of the freezing mark for Overton for our overnight low. Highs today, it felt warm, didn't it? Well, look at these numbers. Near 70 for Flamingo and Boulder Highway. 65 for Charleston Torrey Pines. 63 for Lake Mead. 50 up in Mount Charleston. In fact, your uh, top temperature at McCarran today is about 62 degrees. Now, our normal is 56, so we warmed up nicely. 37 degrees for overnight low. I think we'll be around the mid-60s again for tomorrow, but I want to draw your attention to L.A. 82 degrees for tomorrow. We got 81 today. You mix that in with the winds, and it is not good. Clear skies expected there, too. Looks like most of the Santa Ana winds, these are occurring because of that air of high pressure that's warming us up, okay? That air of high pressure directly overhead is swinging the winds from the north. They are compressing and accelerating accelerating down the uh, terrain to the L.A. Basin in Ventura County, which is why we have numerous advisories in those specific locations. Wind advisories in the L.A. Basin, Ventura County included. Here, no advisories right now because we're not expecting these serious wind speeds. The jet stream will dip down. There's a lot of cool air within this, so we think by Thursday it will dip all the way down to Las Vegas, and that will drop our temperatures like a rock. 37 tonight, clear and chilly. Southwest winds not so bad. 63 for tomorrow, sunny and nice. Extra warm for everybody, but that's going to change. By Wednesday, we'll get some breezes. Temperatures will drop. Our high may only be near 40 by Saturday. We got a chance of showers. We got some wind along with that. Lots of clouds and the possibility. This is a big if now. We could get a chance of some snow showers on the upper elevations, the far west side of the valley. Now, before you start to do cartwheels for hearing that. It just depends on if we get any serious rain here, which it's a moisture start system. There won't probably be a lot of rain. So we're going to see how it all plays out. Away, yeah, exactly. So uh, the one that was fun while it lasted. So <laughs> Chris Matthews is here with sports. Exciting game. Ended badly. Ended badly. Ah. Yeah, big week uh, for coming up, though, for the Rebels, and they may have caught a break. I'll tell you why. Big weekend for UNLV. Also, the one-time graduate rule used by about 1% of college athletes was voted down. Kevin Kruger was one of those athletes. Plus, a hitman arrives in Las Vegas, this time to fight. Sports is coming up next. Winning investigative I team now in full high definition only on Eyewitness News. And welcome back. The ink barely dried on the NCAA's one time graduate transfer rule before it was shot down. It allowed players who had earned undergraduate degrees to transfer immediately to another school, like UNLV's Kevin Kruger. Well, that rule was abolished over the weekend. Fortunately, however, not before Kevin took advantage of the opportunity to play for his dad. The situation was just one where it just seemed like, you know, 10 out, it was 10 out of 10, you know, when it came to reasons or, situ or, you know, circumstances of why you would leave. You know, if it would have been 9 out of 10, I wouldn't have done it. You know, for a guy at a, at a smaller Division One school, go in, play four years, and then maybe graduate, and then still have a year of eligibility and being recruited all over again, which is not the intent of the rule, but I think that's a concern about the abuse of the rule.
Right, 25 players took advantage of the rule before it was shot down. They certainly will be grandfathered in. Besides, Ryan Smith left Utah to follow Urban Meyer to Florida and is now playing right now for a national title. Well, the Rebels went back to work after that tough loss at Air Force. They just needed to hit a few of these outside shots and might have won. You go a month and you don't lose any games and then finally lose the game, especially in conference. You know, it's tough. You know, we just got to win out until we play them again. When we get them here, I mean, we know what to expect and we're going to come out harder. Man. Rebels at Wyoming on Wednesday night. The BYU Cougars will be without its star point guard when they meet UNLV this Saturday. Rashawn Brodus was suspended for the season after being arrested on drunken driving charges. He was stopped Sunday night, only hours after scoring 19 points in BYU's win over San Diego State. Coach, uh, Coach Dave Rose says Brodus won't be practicing or playing with the team anymore this season. Las Vegas less than two weeks away from hosting a blue-collar champion is making his Las Vegas debut. Junior welterweight champ Ricky Hatton is unbeaten in 41 fights. It's been a long time coming. Seems like for the last maybe three, four, five years even I've been wanting to come over here. But uh, I've been coming over here for big fights for the last five years and now I'm finally getting my chance at myself. All right, Hatton will fight Juan Arango January 20th over at the Paris Hotel. I, I love those accents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You got now here's Dave Crossier with some of the stories we're working on for Eyewitness News at 11. Dave? Okay, thanks, Paula. A county firefighter in trouble with the law again. You'll hear what the department has to say about one of their employees' continued allegations with prostitutes. And parents are speaking out. The controversial zoning meeting is tonight. Hear what changes are being suggested and how people are reacting. All tonight at 11. Back to you. Thanks, Dave. That's it for Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 6. If you'd like more information on any of tonight's stories, you can go to our website, lasvegasnow.com. We'll see you this evening at 11. Have a great evening.